All right, again, this is Physical Science 1119, and uh, we just talked about um, the series circuits. Let's talk about parallel circuits a little bit. And if you'll join me on page S in your pace, and uh, page 24, S is, uh, of course, where the problems are to solve, and you can do that after you have read page 24 and studied the diagrams. So here on page um, 24 is a picture showing a parallel circuit, and they're using light bulbs to represent the resistances. So over here I have drawn a, uh, let me stand over here, drawn a, a, a parallel circuit, and notice I have two batteries hooked up. Now that's a little different than the diagram in the pace, and I have a reason to do that because they do something similar to this on the checkup and self-test, but we want to talk about this. We have these two batteries hooked up in parallel. Because they're not in series, they're not going to get added together. So because each of these is 1.5, if you took one of these out, the other one would still be operating. But they don't add together and create more oomph, even though we have two of them. I could have three, four, five, six of them. It wouldn't matter if they're being hooked up in parallel there is no more oomph behind them than if I just had one. Uh, the only reason you might do something like this is if you're concerned about uh, one of the batteries dying and you want another one in there as a backup. So here we have 1.5 volts, 1.5 volts. So the total of the voltage, voltage total is only going to be 1.5 volts. Now let's talk about resistance, because that's the one that is the most unique in uh, trying to solve. Before we talk about that, I want you to notice something here, though. If one of these resistances were to burn out, so right now the electrons come out of the batteries, they come up here, some of the electrons pass through this part of the circuit, and as they're going through, the friction going through this light bulb causes it to light up. And this has eight ohms of resistance. So this light bulb lights up. At the same time, more electrons are coming up here. They come across. They go through this light bulb that has a 4 ohm resistance and brrrt, they produce some light coming through here and this one is 2 ohms. So there's, a, there's always paths that they can follow. It's kind of like a, a detour if one of these burned out. Let's say this one burned out. So the electrons that are coming here all of a sudden it's like a traffic jam. They can't move. They can't go all the way across here, so they stop. But that doesn't mean that everything else stops. The electrons coming out of the battery are able to still move through the 8 ohm resistance, and they're still able to move through the 2 ohm resistance. So even though one bulb is burned out, the other two bulbs will stay lit. And the electrons will be able to flow and complete the circuit. So this is a closed circuit, it's complete, and everything is working. Now because we have three of them, we're going to see what actually happens to the resistance. In uh, the series, we would add these together, remember, so I'd have 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14, and I'd have 14 ohms. That's not what happens in uh, parallel circuits. The formula is 1 over R total, so the total resistance is going to be 1 over the first one, 1 over 2, plus 1 over 4, plus 1 over 8. Now you can use your calculator, but in this case I'm, I see that this is same as 4 over 8, plus 2 over 8, plus 1 over 8, whoop, which is 7 over 8. Now I'm going to grab my calculator real quick and clear, all right. So if the total resistance equals 7 over 8, then the resistance equals the reciprocal, okay, the inverse rather. You turn this upside down and it would be 8 over 7. So I'm going to take the calculator and take 8 divided by 7 and get 1.14. And again, that's in ohms. So notice what happened. I have 2, 4, and 8. Those are kind of big numbers. When you put all those together and the total resistance ends up decreasing in a parallel circuit. So the total resistance is, let me put 1.5 up here and put the 1.14 down here and now I can divide 
1.5 div divided by 1.14. And so the amps, the current flow is 1.31. Five, 1.316 amps. Now let's think about what happens if you were in, this, this is the way houses are wired. And so if you have several things plugged into the circuits in a room, let's say hair blowers, you have a little, a little pot in the corner of the room heating up water, maybe there's a space heater, all of those things are drawing a lot of electricity. They all have a high resistance but you add all of those together, do the reciprocal, and because your voltage, the oomph, stays the same, 120, but now you have a lot more resistance um, being added up, what happens is it creates a very high number, and you can play with some numbers if you want to and see what happens, but it causes the amps to greatly increase, which means there's a lot of electricity coming through the wires. When that happens, it creates a lot of friction in the wires, which literally heats up the wires. Just like rubbing your hands heats up your hands, electrons flowing through, um, through the copper wires heats them up to the point that they can cause house fires, which is why you have a circuit breaker in your house. And uh, if there's too many amps being pulled through that little circuit, it'll flip a switch and uh, turn off that breaker and it will actually, it's, what it's really doing is protecting your house from burning down. So don't get frustrated when that happens. Look around the room and see if you have too many things plugged in. Unplug a couple of things, go ahead and flip the breaker, use one thing at a time, or move some things to another room where it'll be on a different circuit. Uh, and your pace talks a little bit more about that uh, later on, the, the circuit breakers and how they work. So again, the total resistance is we add these up. And if you have a calculator that does fractions, you can try that. Add these fractions together. And then you should be able to find a key that looks like 1 over x. Or it might say x to the negative 1 power. And uh, here's a little magic trick for you, all right? If you take the 7 eighths, which is the answer that you'll get when you add those, and then you hit this key or this key, whatever your calculator has, it should give you the 1.14, or it might give you the 8 over 7, and then you can convert the fraction into a decimal, and the decimal is what we'll want to plug in for the total resistance. But then again, don't forget this little trick here. When we're in res um, a parallel circuit, all right, I didn't write that word parallel up here, but this is a parallel circuit. The, uh, the batteries, the voltage in this case, does not get added together and become three. Each of these is 1.5, and that's why we kept the oomph, the voltage, at just 1.5. So remember that. I think in the homework on page S, you're not going to need to know that, but then they throw that out on a checkup or self-test or something, and I just want you to be forewarned about those differences. All right? Good luck. Do your best. And uh, when you go up to the score key, study how they uh, add, how they, how they solve this. And, uh, of course, you can use the magic triangle, which will make the last step a lot easier for you, and you should get the right answer. Um, I'm going to take a break here for a little bit and set up for a demonstration, and I want to demonstrate for you the difference between the light bulbs in a parallel circuit and in a uh, series circuit and what happens when we disconnect wires and uh, what happens to the, how bright the lights are in the two different circuits. So we're going to do that in just a moment, and then we, there's one more very important section that we need to talk about in this pace, and that's the step up and step down transformers. And that can be a little confusing, so I want to uh, lay out some, some examples of that and explain that to you. So uh, that's coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, we're back in uh, Physical Science 1119. We're going to do a demonstration right now of the difference between parallel circuits and series circuits. And if you've ever um, put lights on the Christmas tree and had one light go out and then the whole string went dead, that would be because it's in series. Or if you could take one out and all the lights stay on, it's because it's been wired as parallel circuitry. And we're going to illustrate that here with these four light bulbs. So the way these are wired right now, when I turn on the switch, the electricity is going to flow through the, uh, through the black here and it can go through this bulb 
or it can go through this bulb here and back out to the white, continue the circuit. It can go up here, travel through this bulb, or it can go through this bulb. So all four of these are going to light up. And because they're not wired in series, they all can pull the maximum amount of electricity through them, which is the, uh, we'll light the 60 watt bulb, all right, with 120 volts, you know, passing through all of them. Okay, so there they all are, nice and bright. All right, I'm going to unscrew this one before it gets too hot. Notice, unscrew one, unscrew two, and they're all still lit up, okay? So again, this is because it's wired in parallel. Even though the electrons can't go through these two circuits, they are able to pass through the other two circuits, and uh, the power's still on. All right, so now I'm going to illustrate what it looks like when they're wired in series. Okay, so I took a little break, wired it up again. This time, it's going to be in series. So the electricity flows in through here, goes through this bulb out here and then goes through this one across here, through here, across, and then out here, and then I have it connected up through this wire to go back to the source. Now when I turn it on, notice they are all lit, okay? Can you see that they're all lit? But they are very dim, and that's what happens in a series circuit is that the current is being divided. It's going through a lot more resistance. So you'd have to add together all of these resistance. And so the pull, the, uh, um, the actual current flowing through is greatly reduced. Okay, so now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn it off so I'm not dealing with live electricity. I'm gonna unplug it from here. I'm gonna take the wire off of this one. And now I'm going to so now the circuit's gonna finish going through these three. Notice that it is a little brighter now, okay? So it's only going through a path of three of these. So the resistance is a little less than it was when there was four, but obviously it's a much greater resistance than when I had uh, the parallel circuits. And now watch what happens. I'm gonna just unscrew one at random here. Let's do this middle one. So if I unscrew the middle one, ta-da, they all die. And again, the reason is because as soon as I unplug this, then there's a traffic jam. The electricity comes to this socket and it stops. It can't go any further. And there's no other path for the electrons to go through, so the circuit completely stops. As soon as I put a working bulb back in and hook it up, ta-da, electricity goes through all of these. I need to make sure I hold on to this for years to come because here in America now, we're not allowed to even buy these 60 watt bulbs anymore. So it's a good thing I have four working bulbs and, uh, and that I'm making a video of this because if these bulbs ever die, I don't know if this will work as well with those uh, you know, hurricane type uh, lampies, whatever they are. So anyways, hopefully that helps you understand the difference, some of the differences between parallel and series circuits.